If there's one thing I don't like about YouTube, it's the culture. Now, what the hell do I mean by the culture? Now, well, YouTube is great for entertainment, but when it comes down to finding good, solid resources that are useful, then I don't think it's the best place. Now, I'm basing this opinion on a wide range of different topics from finance to videography and photography. Now, basically what I mean is the style of videography that YouTube mainly talks about and promotes. And this is being cinematography. And when I talk about cinematography, I'm going to focus in this video about the colour grading side of cinematography or cinematic videos, whatever you want to call them. And so in this video, basically, I want to explain the other side of the story as well as the cinematic side. But the part that YouTube doesn't really focus on, and that's the real life uses. Now, if you're making music videos, short films, YouTube videos, just cinematic sequences, then sure, go for your these teal and orange LUTs and things like that. But when it comes down to the real world, these LUTs are not so useful, especially the free ones that you find on YouTube, they're not that good. But on the other side of the story, I'll get at that to a moment, you're gonna need a completely different type of LUT and color grading techniques. So before I get into this, if you do enjoy this video and find it useful, as always, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's take a look at how I use my LUTs. So firstly, I'm going to start talking about the YouTube cinematic cinematography side of things. And then we'll go on to the other side that you won't hear really anywhere else. And so on this thing here, I have a description of my workflow on YouTube. So I'm going to tell you the criteria and the different LUTs and styles of videoing I all use for different scenarios. So for example, if I'm shooting a YouTube video, I record in S-Log2. Now for these videos, I like a clean, natural look. I don't care a great deal, especially in these kinds of scenarios, about getting a very cinematic look. So I'll go for an S-Log2 to Rec 709 conversion LUT. Now basically what this does is it converts the S-Log picture profile and slaps it into the Rec 709 color gamut or colour space, or whatever. And this basically gives a very nice natural look. I do have LUTs with hints of teals and orange and greens and pinks, depending on what kind of thing I want to go for and what the project is. But generally, I would recommend having a look online for either free or paid S-Log2 or whatever picture profile you're shooting in to Rec 709. So look that up online, whatever picture profile you're shooting in, just type that in and to Rec 709 and you'll find a pretty good set of LUTs for you. The reason I shoot in S-Log2 is to get the most dynamic range possible. Now, even when I'm shooting on the G7, which has pretty bad dominant range and no true picture profiles, these lights back here are blown out. And I like to shoot in S-Log2 so I can fully utilize the dynamic range of the A7 Mark III to fully keep everything nicely exposed because I have a pretty balanced lighting setup here. And so I like to fully utilize the space and lighting that I have. And on the side, so, so yeah, I'll use S-Log2 for this. Other cases when I use S-Log2 is usually gonna be real estate videos and my business client videos. Basically the reason is, is because I like, the type of videos I make for my business is very clean and natural looking styles of it, types of videos. So. Like I say, hotel videos, real estate videos, things like that. I don't do a lot of cinematic stuff. And I do this because having a nice high dynamic range looks very clean and natural and gives me the kind of look that I want and that I couldn't get if I was slapping on a disgusting teal and orange LUT, which most of the ones on YouTube are. Hence why I don't really like YouTube. So yeah, I'll do whatever picture profile I'm shooting in. S-Log -log HLG to Rec 709, so I'd recommend doing that. Secondly, if I'm on the rare occasion making a cinematic style type video, maybe going traveling, making that kind of video, then I'll generally shoot in either S-Log or HLG, mostly HLG 3, which is one of the perks of this Sony A7 Mark III that I've got here, is that it has this new, very nice picture profile. And I have a few LUTs, mainly from Christian Make Grab. His cinematic HLG LUTs are pretty good. I'd recommend them, link down in the description. And, and the reason I use his LUTs is basically, 
as I said before, the free ones aren't much good. They give you very unnatural skin tones, which I'm not a fan of. And then the greens are very orangey and sickly golden. That's how I'd probably describe it. And I don't like them. Even if the cinematic styles of video is what I'm going for, I like to have that bit of a natural look. Actually, I just thought mid-video, I'd do a quick comparison between this type of scenario with using S-Log2 versus HLG, so you can sort of see the kind of thing that I mean. So this is S-Log2 shooting in normal S-Log2, and I will slap on a S-Log2 to Rec. 709 uh, LUT onto this thing. I will do very minimal colour grading, just so you can see what this looks like. And then three, two, one. This is now the HLG picture profile. ISO has been halved because I'm not overexposing for S-Log. And yeah, this is what it's gonna look like. Slapping on the LUT, without the LUT, with the LUT, whatever. And again, I'll do very minimal color grading just so you can see the type of look that you can get with this. Back to the next bit, I guess. So the reason I'll shoot HLG instead of S-Log for these scenarios is, number one, you can focus a lot easier and you can see the colours more so straight out of the camera because it's less flat than HLG, than S-Log, sorry. You do get a little bit less dynamic range, but I don't mind too much. It's still pretty good dynamic range. And secondly, it's HLG is a lot better in low light situations and high light situations. So S-Log 2, if you didn't know, you have to shoot over 800 ISO and with HLG, you have to shoot over 125. So in the middle of the day, you wanna have an ISO as low as possible. You can't really use ISO 800 for really bright situations. And you always, in low light, you have to shoot two stops or something like that over what you'd normally shoot, which makes shadows very noisy. And HLG is great for low light. So that's why I usually use it for low light situations and for my cinematic style videos. Similar thing with S-Log, I will go for two kind of things. I don't have a Rec. 709, I go for a teal and orange or sort of greeny pink sort of color profile. So that is my workflow when working with LUTs, picture profiles on the A7 Mark III. Obviously you have different cameras, you'll have different sorts of picture profiles, so you have C-Log or V-Log or Cine V, D, whatever camera you're shooting on. But at the end of the day, the conversion to Rec. 709 and the teal and orange cinematic looks versus natural looks is all going to be applicable to every kind of camera that you're going for. So yeah, that is it. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave a comment down below. But don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.